Praise God. So say it for the last time to the person by your side. Tell the person, be strong. Tell the person, be strong. Oh, say it strongly. Be strong. Be strong. Tell the person, be courageous. be courageous. Remind the person, tough times are still coming. But be strong. Tough times are still coming. Be strong, be strong. Anytime they call the price of something, or I'm talking to our mothers here, a lot of you that go to the market, anytime you go to the market and they call the price, just block your spirit and keep walking. I get what I'm saying? Keep walking. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Don't bring it to the children. Don't bring it to your husband. Don't cook a soup and you think the man did not want to eat the soup. I get what I'm saying? Don't get angry because of the money that's been spent on the soup. Anytime you go to the market and you're back, don't let their spirit affect your spirit. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues of life. Okay, when you are entering to BRT, don't get angry. When you call Uber, don't get angry. And you see, and you see whatever, whatever I, I don't I do it most, most of the time. And you see the price going up. Don't get angry. Just brace up yourself. Make sure you have enough in the account that the money is coming out of. Because so that they don't keep you and they call Pastor Manu. I get what I'm saying. Don't, don't, just brace your heart. Be strong. I have a message of strength for somebody here. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be courageous. The Lord was telling Joshua many times, Joshua, be strong. Joshua, be courageous. Things are coming. It takes men of wit to survive this season. Oh, come on. This is the worst time to die. I'm telling you, some people say they want to go. Some people are praying for rapture. Rapture is not yet coming. Pastor, how do you know? I've not finished my own. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. oh, this is the best time. Do you know when we have testimony now, your testimony will be so solid? Because there are a lot of things that should quench your testimony. So when you have a good testimony now, that's genuine testimony. Because it was not good, it was not better, it was not well at all, but you still thrive. We are not surviving. We are not survivors. We are thriving. Tell somebody I'm thriving the season. In this same season, somebody here will give a one million and say, hey, is there a need here? Can I support what is going on here? I he say, oh, well, that's your rental. He say, don't worry yourself. I know what, what is happening. I am not of them that look at the things that are seen. I'm of them that look at the things that are not seen because the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are the things that are eternal. Those are the things I hold on to. I'm not spending your currency. I'm spending the currency of fight. 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 The just shall live. By faith. Tell someone said the just shall live by faith. In the next few weeks, we'll be preaching a lot of faith messages. We want people to come back to the understanding of what faith is. Faith, first and foremost, you have understand it. Faith gives you the boldness to express everything that the Lord has set in your heart. That's what faith does. Faith is the one that gives you access to know that you have a father called God. That he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's what faith does. What faith does is that he gives you the strength and the boldness to ask. And if you can ask in boldness and in faith, then you will receive. That's what you should have. No, 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 no. Faith does not tell you that it does not exist. Faith tells you it already exists before you start asking. You are only asking because he exists. That's what faith does. And I'm praying for somebody here today again. That the Lord, your faith will not fail you this season. Okay, so let's jump to it. Last week, I mentioned it very clearly. Divine encounters and visitation. I said, one of the things that you should notice when we say visitation is that the Lord is visiting our enemy. How many of you remember what I said? <clears throat> How many of you know that within the last week, the Lord has visited some of your enemies? I want you to know. <laughs> There's some enemy that may not tell you, but the Lord visited them. The people that have been troubling you before, watch, they won't be troubling you again. May God, the Lord has visited them. How? The Lord may visit them in a dream. It may be a warning. Oh my God, I love the way the Lord visits. His visits are powerful. He will warn the king and say, hey, king, okay, the whole of your village currently are already uh, out of womb right now. Nobody can give birth right now. And you yourself, you're a dead man. That, that's, that's how God visits people. That's how God visits your enemy. Oh, this is a good MFM prayer. The Lord will visit your enemy this, this night. <laughs> I love some of their prayers. With some. You know, so the Lord will visit your enemy tonight. Tonight. There's some enemy that need visitation. 
as in they will sleep. All of a sudden, they just say, my hand is, ah, uh, ah, uh, what's, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And as they are doing that, they will just see the image of Emmanuel. Ah, uh, ah, uh, someone, someone, yeah, I'm the one, sir. Hey, I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> you are not the only one that can reveal yourself in the night. We too, we can reveal ourselves in the night. You are spirit, we are spirit. You don't understand what I'm saying? Okay, witchcraft, they operate in the air. Is that not right? I say, yeah, are you sure you know? <laughs> That's what they say. Okay, so witch and witchcraft, they operate in the air, right? Because the Bible said the prince of the power of the air that walk in the children of our obedience, that is what they operate in. They operate in the air. They operate in the spirit. Now listen, we also, we operate in the spirit. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Now the Bible says that we are like a wind. You don't know where we are coming from. You don't know where we are going. So is a man that is born of the spirit. So you can't determine our unpredictability. We are unpredictable. You don't even know I'm going to show up from another time. That is the wind. You can't hold the wind. You can't keep the wind. You can't stop the wind. You can't arrest the wind. Church, are you here? So I told you severally, I said we're getting to a season. Eddie, we're getting to a season. We're not waiting for them to come and attack us. We're going to their meetings. Every time I say that thing, I know some people always wonder. They always say, Pastor, take this thing easy. Pastor, take this thing easy. Let us not be inviting certain spirit. No, you're not getting what I'm saying. We are spirit ourselves. So if, if you are a spirit yourself, should you be worried about another spirit? Come on, talk to me, church. Huh? No, we are, we are senior spirit, if there's anything like that. I get what I'm saying. We are, we are operating in a dimension as a spirit. Look at somebody say, you are a spirit, oh God. Stop, stop doing like a flesh. You are a spirit. You know, some of you, some of you, you have eaten so much, you are thinking you are flesh. You are not flesh. You are not flesh. Do you know that by the time you die, this beautiful stuff that you have, this beautiful air that you have, this beautiful shape that you have, all of them will become dust. I hope you know that. That's to tell you that you are not flesh. You are spirit. You are spirit. So start thinking to behave like spirit. That's why you're walking in the spirit is what determines your destiny. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Divine encounters and visitation. So I said last week, I said one of the things you notice when the Lord visits is that he breaks protocol and norms of the earth. Do you remember? Then I also said, that's when we mentioned 2 Kings 3, 17. And we said, you may not see the wind, you may not see the rain, but the valley shall be filled with water. Number two, we said, anytime God decides to honor a man utterly forgotten and despised, that's when you see God manifest visitation. You remember we mentioned about Mordecai. How many of you remember? And we prayed the, period, the prayer of the spirit of what? Amen. And I told you to push it through that we break every spirit of amen. Now, number three, write it down. When God wants to judge a situation and show himself mighty on behalf of someone, there will be a visitation and an encounter. When God wants to what? When he wants to judge a situation and show himself mighty on behalf of someone. When God wants to show himself mighty on behalf of someone, he will show up. You know, we said divine visitation is what? Is the heightened expression of the manifestation of God. It's not the omni presence, he's here, but the manifesting presence, that's one level. But the heightened, that is more intensity, that's when you talk about the encounter and visitation. Okay. Numbers chapter 14, 1 to 24. Some of you are very familiar with that scripture. When they went to spy the land, and they had gone to look at the land. They were looking at the land from the posture of princes. The people that were sent to go and look at the land were princes. They were not low level rank officers. They were top level, call them the generals. Those are the people that went to check the land, all right? And when they got there, they said, why, why? So when they got the land, they got the message. After they got the message, they were not sharing the message. Why has the Lord brought this land to fall upon us? Now, this is Israel expressing himself. He said, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and our children should become victims. Now, let me tell you something. Every time people face adversity is a test of your strength. 
I will not know how strong you are until you are tested. You see, that's why he's always making me laugh. When you see, um, when you see, <laughs> I, I, by God's grace, I've done a bit of a wedding in my life, my lifetime. When I do weddings, and I see, and I see uh, two lovely people coming down, you know, and they are holding themselves, smiling, and um, when you tell them kiss the bride, they kiss the bride, you know. I always look at them from afar. I say, if only these people know what is coming. So I want to remind you that, listen, when adversity is coming, please don't run. Don't run. When adversity is coming, don't run. Because, you see, one of the issues that the people of Israel had was that for every time there's an issue, Israel will want to run. Any issue provoke Israel. The worst people you can have in your team are people that see issues in everything you want to do. Listen, guys, when you form a group, just try and identify them. Immediately you start the group and you throw something, a major project up, and the first people that say, hey, we have something, say, yeah, talk to us. Say, ah, you can't have poor. <laughs> if you have those type of people, say, okay, okay, one, two, okay, all right, all right, thank you. Uh, let's hear you. Even there might be some people that will say, Pastor, don't worry yourself, let's go. They don't know how we are going to go. But, but the point is that they are able to pump you up and say, Pastor, if the Lord has said it, we will take it. You may ask them later and say, oh, are we taking it? <laughs> and the person may not have an answer. But the person would have done what encouraged you, motivate you to know that we can take it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you see, when you have a team and inside that team, people that will always bring down your spirit before you take a journey. Ah, you want to do a long walk. We've just started. We want to walk a marathon. We want to walk from here to stadium. As we're just about to start. And you just hear among the team. Ah, Pastor, you are going. Ah, the moment you say, you be back. Ah, you're just looking at, what's wrong with you? We've, just, we've not even started the work. He said, Pastor, this place is too long. It's too long. No, 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 no. And some people will complain from that it's too long. You'll be fall, you'll just be hearing. You, as you're walking, you just say, oh my God. Eh? This person will know. Uh, you, the, the, there's already a work that you are doing to work. There's already an endurance that you are trying to put into it. Then you are now carrying another thing that is following you. Do you know that's how people follow and people go in their destiny? Some people that you are not supposed to, to join your work, you've joined them in your team. They are not helping your life. Oh, we're not doing, we're not doing the audit today, but just, just keep that in your mind. So that was what happened here. Verse 2, verse 2, I've read verse 2. Verse 3, okay. And all of, aha, look at, look at, read, one, two, go, what did he say? Complain against Moses and Aaron. If only, did you see these people? Child, do you see these people? You know, I used to tell people, all of us, I used to blame Moses. You know, <laughs> He said, Moses, I thought you said you were the meekest man on earth. And you were angry. <laughs> if you have over three million people complaining, three million complaining what we ate, we did not eat. We are eating too much manna. Give us another uh, thing. Uh, where do we take water from? There is no water. Yeah, complaining every day. Water is bitter. What's going on here? Please take us back to Egypt. Oh. At least we know we can eat garlic, we can lick onions, we can lick uh, kukuba. At least we can go there and eat. Look at what they are saying. If only we had what? Did you see the mental capacity? Or if only we had died in the wilderness. Next verse. Next verse. So they said to one another, let us select church, church, church. I hope you know that this chapter came after God had said they should go and spy the land. This, they are now making their own arrangement. There was now, they were now organizing a team. Please, who is leading us? <laughs> we are going back to Egypt. Please, can I ask you a question, guys? Who told them to leave Egypt? God. Who said, Pharaoh, let my people go? God. Who is telling them to go back? My, my <laughs> so, you must understand something here. Can you imagine they were selecting leader to return? To return to Egypt. May we not return to our vomit. I'm telling you. Next verse. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Next verse. What happened? 
But Joshua the son, You know, I always, there, there are some strategic people in the scripture that gets me excited. I like them in my group. I like Phineas. That guy always wake me up. If I have a Phineas in my group, I can take a nation. I like Joshua. Joshua is always stepping me into another dimension. I like Caleb. Caleb, oh my God, at 80. He said, listen, we're still able to take this territory. I'm still feeling like 40. I love people like that. Not people that they are 60, they are 50. What other man is even 50? They are 45. I say, I can't do anything, no. I'm getting it. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, I, I was sharing with the leaders team. I was sharing with the leadership group I created recently. And I shared a video with them. In that video, this, this woman is 109. People that have watched that video. I think it's about 109 or something. 109 years old. Okay. You know what that woman is doing? They were asking her. They were saying, what's your vision? He said, ah, I have a vision. At 109. <laughs> he said, man, what vision? He said, ah, we're looking at creating um, villages that will have several medicines. We can develop our own medicine so that we can reach out to so many villages. At 109, there was still a vision at 109. And you see somebody at 50, 55, 60, he said, I'm retired. Retire from what? Retire from what? Retire from life. Oh, come on. Why can you say you are retired? Oh, come on. That's why I like the apostle saying, I'm not retired. I'm firing up. Ah, by God's grace, at 70, I'll still be preaching the way I'm preaching now. Listen, if you are doing this, God will be giving you the energy to keep going. Not the one you say, I'm tired. I'm tired. Ah, you, you, can't, you can't do the work. You can't do the work. What? Oh, come on. He said, Joshua, the son of Nod, Caleb, the son of, all right, Jephunneh, who were among those who aspired the land, tore their clothes. Now, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. Joshua and Caleb tore their clothes. Wait, what, what is all of this now? Guys, what's going on now? If we're going to take this nation, let's say the nation. How can we be shouting every time? Take Sulay, take Sulay, take Sulay. You people think we're just joking. If we're going to take you, let's take you later. That's what they're saying. Let us not come here. Everybody will come. Hey, we worship. Oh, we worship. Lord, give us grace. Give us grace. Anoint us, Lord. Anoint us, Lord. Then let's go and take a territory. Uh, Pastor, you can go. Joshua ah. said, come on. Let's stop this joke. If you want to take you later, let's take you later. That's what they're saying. And I said, who were among those who spied, tore their clothes. Next verse. And they spoke to what? They spoke to all the congregation of Israel. What did they say? So look at their first observation. What's their first observation? It's a good land. Exceedingly good land. So they saw something. Exceedingly good land. Man, this is a good stuff. All right, next one. If the Lord what? So, so the condition is what? If the Lord delights in us, what will happen? It's not about the enemy. If the Lord delights in us, we will what? He will bring us into this land and do what? Give it to us. A land which flows with what? Just look at what those guys are saying. A land which flows with milk and honey. Next verse. Next verse. Only what? Do not rebel against the Lord. Nor what? Tell somebody, don't fear the people of this land. Don't fear the people of this land. I love the way one of my friends used to say, he said, fear no man but God. Tell somebody that. Fear no man but God. It's a very strong word. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are. Oh, talk to me, church. They are what? And their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. This was Joshua and Caleb. They were taking the nation of Israel. They were speaking. Where's Moses? Where's Aaron? Uh -uh. They've gone to hide. But Joshua and Caleb were speaking to the people. Say, come on, guys. We can take this nation. All right. Next verse. What did I say? What happened? And, uh, did, you, did you see that? All the congregations <laughs> said to stone them with stone. They just pick stone. You know how... <laughs> You know how all of us are saying, some people just come and say, Pastor, we can just imagine, um, I, want to, I want to take a very good example. All right, Banana Island. No, Equa Atlantic. Equa Atlantic. Please reduce the AC. Equa Atlantic. Let's say I just come here, guys, 
And I say, men and brethren, I want you to get ready. I've seen it. 10-story building. Equal Atlantic. We're buying it next week. <laughs> you know, some of you will not tell me anything. Some of you will whisper. People that love me will call me or send me messages. Or some of them that can't talk to me will talk to PA. I say, Let's, please, please help us tell your husband. We know that sometimes, we're not saying he's not our pastor, but we just feel some things. We, we're, not saying, we're not saying he's extreme. Oh. You know how somebody wants to gossip, but he wants to yab you. He said, we're not saying he's extreme, but we just feel, hey, it's just that pastor, pastor tilts a little. We don't want to say into madness, but tilt a little. <laughs> that was what was happening here. Because you know what he told you guys? He said, we can take this land. The people that went to view the same place with them, they saw average Goliaths. This is the way they were. That's what they saw. So they were, they were looking. <laughs> They've already taken pictures. They've taken selfies. I get on I me. Mean. They brought it to the people. They said, guys, see what this stupid uh, Joshua and Caleb are saying we should go and take a land. Are you seeing it? Then as they are showing them and expressing it to the people, they say, eh? Are those the people that they told us to go and get? They say, yes, those are people. Everybody just had a picking stone. <laughs> we have been seeing, we have been seeing, you see that Joshua, that guy. Have you not noticed, have you not noticed Joshua? He's the one that follows Moses. He's the guy that will sit under the mountain. So when Moses goes to collect the, 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 the law, he will sit there. You will not see him when he's coming. Have you not seen how he always carry himself? If he carry himself, I see if he's the one that brought us. I, I, have you seen how Joshua behaves? We know he is high-minded. That guy is high-minded. He has an issue. Joshua has an issue. Caleb has an issue. These were princes, George. Princes, not low-ranking officers. These are generals that we're talking. They pick stone. Stop it. They wanted to stone them. Guess what happened? Talk to me, church. What happened? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've always told you, understand the tone of scripture. All this time, there was no now. You know, they were having all those. They were, somebody was saying, ah, uh, Goliath, ah, good land, ah, grapes. So there was so many conversations going on. Nobody, nobody stood for God. Oh, my God. Nobody stood on God on the word of God. Nobody stood on the promise of God. Everybody was just saying, eh, oh no, we can't take it. We can't take it. We're not sure. We're not this. God just, God didn't say anything. Talk is cheap. It's when you make a move, God moves. So God, God was watching. God was watching. Who is going to make a move? Let me see who's going to make a move. God didn't do anything. But when they took stone, after somebody came out and said, Guys, take it easy. I will lead the people by taking this place. And they pick stone to want to stone them. Now, the glory of the Lord appeared. In the tabernacle of the meeting before all the children. So God joined in the session. So God came into the meeting. So they were having a meeting, but God showed up. They didn't invite God. But your position can draw God. I get what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about encounter. You can be in a position that can attract God. A position of faith and boldness can attract God. That's why I said, there's some decisions some of us will make. When you make it, you don't discover that a fourth man is in your fire. You made that decision, but you didn't. Church, can I be so frank with you guys? Tell me the truth. Do you think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was expecting that God was going to show up in the fire? Do you know how I know they were not? The statement they used for Nebuchadnezzar. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, Listen, we know that the Lord can deliver us. So, so they first told them that, hey, we know. However, <laughs> so they got to the extreme side of faith. You know what they call the extreme side of faith? The extreme side of faith that even if God does not do it, it doesn't move me. No, no, no. Let me change that. The extreme side of faith that even if God does not do it, it doesn't change God. That's the extreme side. What am I saying? It means if I don't have it, doesn't mean God is not God. That's the extreme side of faith. Because you call faith when you have it. 
You call faith when you have it. We call faith even when you don't have it. So that's what I'm saying. So at this point, oh man, I like I'm going to come that later. Share that mission, I bet you go. Do you know that when they were taking them into the fire, when they first insulted the king and called him his name without title, I get what I'm saying. Then I said, he not told, he not told the king, listen, we don't care. The king said, no, 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 this is, this is an insult in front of, come on, you know what? He top, he top the fire seven times. Seven, the word of perfection. Make it perfect. So that when we throw them inside, they will not even see anything in their body. That's how do you know? Because when they were going to throw them inside, the people that carried them to throw them inside were burnt. They are not the one, no. <laughs> they are not the one going inside. It's just that they carried them to tell you how hot it was. Church, church, it's one thing to tell you we'll throw you inside the fire. It's another thing to tie you up that we're about to throw you inside the fire. It's another thing to get close to the fire. Are you see? <laughs> oh, you guys have not seen fire before. Do you know as you're getting close to fire, you may start having negotiation. We did not say king. They didn't blow, they didn't blow the trumpet well. We didn't hear the trumpet very well. Let them blow the trumpet one more time. As you get close to fire, you reveal what's inside of you. Fire reveals. You see, all this, I love God. I would die for God. I would, I would die. Oh, pastor, I would die. With God, I would die. I die. Oh, God, oh, God. All this, all this, I would die, I would die. By the time something shows, we will know what has been inside all this while. I would die, I would die, I would die. Jesus will follow you. Anywhere you are going, will follow you. That's what Peter said. And as they were going, they said, ah, bros, are you not one of the followers? No. No, no, you look like that. No, no, no. My brother wore my shirt that day. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm, three times I will follow you. That's why Jesus was saying, I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail you. You need prayer for faith not to fail you. In the days of test, oh God, you would have committed the sin before you remember whether it was sin you committed. Have you not seen somebody under pressure before? Because some of you, you may be thinking you are smarter than God. Yeah. You know, some of you just say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know if I do it now, God, God will come. <laughs> then, 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 you just go that God will not be doing God slow. God will not be watching you. God too will not move. Because it shocked me that as they were taking Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the fire, when, if I was the one, if I was Shadrach, I said, God is going to show up. Then as we're getting close to the fire, no, God will show up. The God, the God of Elijah, the God, <laughs> the God of Isaac and Jacob, he will show up. Then as they're pushing me to the fire, the Lord, the Lord will show up. The Lord. Your voice shall be going down. The Lord will show up. The Lord. Then as they want to throw me inside the fire, then you, no, you change the prayer. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, Lord. <laughs> You know how we always see prayers? You know how we always see prayers? You, you, you start with faith, as it were, but when it's getting utter, Lord, mercy. I know, I know, whether it's your will, your will be done. Lord, your will be done. Eh, my will is that you go inside this fire. Your will be done. <laughs> but guess what, church? Guess what, church? Guess what, church? They were thinking that the Lord will deliver them before they enter the fire. The Lord was inside the fire. No, you don't understand. Those are different things. You are thinking he will deliver me from the fire. No, God said, don't worry yourself. I'm inside the fire. Come in. Because I want to prove to the devil that fire or out of fire, I'm still God. <laughs> do, do you not understand? So no matter what you're about to go through, that's why I love one of my best scriptures, Isaiah 43, I think. Shoot it off for us. He said, when you go through the waters, he said, it's here. When you go through the fire, is there. That means he's always waiting. He said, but now, thus said the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your... By what? Okay. No, no. By, by your name. You are what? You are mine. Next verse. What does it say? Read it. Read it. 
When you walk through the fire, you shall not be born, nor the flame will scorch upon you. Tell somebody when you go through the waters, tell somebody that, he will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And now, now tell the person, when you walk through the fire, now the question is when, not if. Did you see that? Tell somebody you will walk through the fire one day. Ah, yeah. Tell the person again, you will walk through your own fire one day. But this is the guarantee. Tell the person, this is the guarantee. The guarantee is that you shall not be burnt. Nor shall the flame scorch you. Because you see, you do not understand what encounter means. Uh, if you do not understand it, you will not know how to posture yourself. Because you see, when the Lord said, now the glory of the Lord appeared, the moment Joshua and Caleb stood and took a position and said, we are well able to take this place. The Bible said they took a stone to want to stone them and the Lord arose. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the meeting before the children of Israel. What happened? Next verse. What did the Lord say? How long shall these people reject me? Uh -huh. How long will they not believe? Do you know not believing God is rejecting God? Anytime you don't believe God, you are rejecting God. That's, that's it's the principle. If you don't believe him, you're rejecting him. He now said what? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them. Next verse. What does he say? I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Next verse. Then the Egyptians will hear of it. For your mind, you brought these people up from among them. Next verse. And they will tell the inhabitants of the land, they have heard that you, you Lord, that you Lord have seen the face, face to face, your cloud stands above them. You go before them in the pillar of cloud by day, in the pillar of fire by night. Next verse. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nation which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, What would they say? Because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land which he swore to them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness. What happened? Now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, Next verse. The Lord is long suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Next, pardon the iniquities of these people. Are you seeing, you know, this is just an issue of rejection or of not believing. Pardon the iniquity of these people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven these people from Egypt even until now. Next verse. Then the Lord said, no, hold on, hold on. The Lord said what? I have pardoned. Now, what's the next verse? But truly. <laughs> next verse. Which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to test. Now, these ten times, oh boy, they've tested God ten times, and heard and not heeded my voice. What will happen to them? They won't see the land which I swore to them. Nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Ha, ah, God have mercy. But, but my servant Caleb, because he was, oh, talk to me, Joe, because he was, he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully. I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit. That's what he does. All right. So that's what happens when God decides to judge a situation and show himself mighty on behalf of someone, the Lord brings an encounter and a visitation. Number three. Is it number four now? When God decides to use the foolish things to confound the wise, that's when you see an encounter and a visitation. When the Lord decides to use foolish things, foolish 
things you see an encounter. The story of 1 Samuel 17, 50 to 53, talking about David and Goliath. Such an experience. When the Lord decides to use foolish things to confound the wise. That's when you know that an encounter has happened. One amazing thing about David and Goliath is that David only used a sling and a stone to face a man, a giant of his own time, over nine feet tall, with the hand of a mastery that can beat anything out. That's who Goliath was. Goliath's feet alone can break a neck. That's the person that David faced. And David used one word. David said, you come to me with javelin. I understand. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. So David was not fighting Goliath. No. David shifted the battle to the battle of gods. Because at the time Goliath came, Goliath said, I will feed you to my God. David said, I will remove your neck. I will feed it to the gods. So he took it and put it to a God battle, not his battle. And any time you shift battle to God, God's unlimited power comes into operation. Anytime you are fighting, then you can't fight. Because by yourself, shall no man, you can't prevail. All right? But when you shift the battle to the Lord, the battle is the Lord's. The moment you make that person, that person God's enemy, then that person will scatter. Let God arise and let his enemy scatter. Church, let's say it one more time. Let God arise. Your problem is you have too many enemies that are not God's enemy. The moment you shift somebody, give him a position. You say, oh God, you are now God's enemy. You are not my enemy. And how do you become God's enemy? Just fight against God's vision for my life. That's all. That's how you become God's enemy. So, David came with a heart. And David used a sling and a stone. What amazed me about that battle was strange. Can I tell you what amazed me about that battle? Time will not permit us to read it. When David saw Goliath, the Bible said David ran towards Goliath. Church, when you see things that can scare you, run towards it. Okay, let's take it to business terms. When you see a project that your heart cannot handle, run towards it. Get to a point that you are not chasing squirrels. You are chasing Elephant, stop chasing yeah. rats. You are chasing antelopes. Get to a point where you can rise up and run after things bigger, bigger than you. You can only run on it by faith. If if anything you are chasing cannot provoke faith, okay, you are not chasing anything. David had one thing that excited me. David at no time. Listen, listen church. Always look at the reward before you start running. David was positioning himself with the reward. He was chasing Goliath with the reward in mind. Uh, please, what would be given to the man that takes this guy down? Ah, okay. You know, go pay tax again. You know, go pay tax again. Ah, okay. What again? Ah, you, when you get, uh, the, uh, you be the in-law of the, eh? In-law of the king. Ah, hold it up. Uh, Goliath, I, I heard you are the one. <laughs> I heard you are the one troubling. I heard you are the one troubling. I heard you are the one troubling. Do you know that David did not run without sense? David had a conversation first. I said, please, what will be given to the man that takes this guy out? Because I discovered that all of you, anytime Goliath shows up, everybody runs. All of you are running because you don't have reward before you. For the joy that was set before Jesus, he endured the cross. If there's nothing set before you, you can't endure. That's it. Yes. Oh, all these, all these people that I can endure. No, something there must be a reward that you are looking at. That's what gives you energy to endure. Yes. Talk to me, church. Do you know a lot of our ladies that are pregnant? You when you are going through your pregnancy period and you're having all those changes and you're having all those, oh, you speak today, you do this tomorrow, or you want to eat this, or you want to eat grass or something. You know, people just have different feelings that, some funny feelings that people have. Now, when you're having those feelings, listen, sometimes when you are shaking, what gives you hope to keep going 
is that there's a reward. You're just seeing the baby. When they show you the scan of the baby, and see the baby dancing, I say, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you feel headache the next day. Oh, oh my, my daddy, man, this baby is gonna come out. You know, you just have this, you just have this strength to keep going because you are seeing the reward. If you don't see a reward of your journey, you can't endure. You can't take risk if you are not seeing reward, though. Eh, no, I go and kill Goliath for nothing. <laughs> eh, I know. Let's even imagine while I'm trying to kill Goliath, both of us die. At least they can move the tax to my whole family. <laughs> I, I mean, let me let me have a position first before I go on this journey. Have something you're looking at. Anytime I come to this church, guys, there's something I'm picturing. I'm not seeing you guys. Oh, let me just confess now. Anytime I come to your church, I'm not seeing all of you. Where I'm seeing. I'm seeing Lagos mainland. I'm seeing, I'm seeing all of a sudden, I'm seeing an expression on the island. All of a sudden. So I'm seeing something big. He keeps me going. So when you say, hey, Pastor, you are just, every time you're coming, you say, no, 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 don't worry. I'm enduring because of what I'm seeing. Tell somebody, kill your Goliath. You need to. You need to kill that Goliath. You need to. You need to. God shows up when you are running towards things that are higher than you. When you want to see God's visitation, you just go and face something higher than you that he has placed in your heart. When he places something in your heart, go for it. It may be bigger than you. He may tell you tomorrow now that some of you have to be a local government chairman and you are here. And you can look at yourself. You've not even finished secondary school. You don't even have a secondary school certificate, sir. You don't have that. And say, me, local government chairman. Say, yes, you will be a local government chairman. Run towards it. You will see God show up. Some of you here, you've been having a sensing. Go and check it. Go and do your next program in Harvard. Ah, Pastor. Harvard. Okay. By God's grace, some of you will be my will be in the same class next year. Your even your amen. Your amen is worried. Okay, okay. We'll be in, we'll, you'll be in Lasso. We'll be in Lasso next week. You know how you calculate the Lasso? Uh, okay. <laughs> Last <Lasso> Botech. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let me drop the next two, three, then we we'll close. When the Lord speeds up a process, you see an encounter when a process is accelerated. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. You see a visitation when the process is accelerated. You know the Lord has entered. What that means is you will see restoration. What should happen in three years will happen in a year. What should take seven years, the Lord will quicken. The Lord will cause it to happen. That's why people love one scripture. I know all of you that love that scripture. I think, um, 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 I know uh, you like that scripture a lot. Please put up Amos 9.13. Put message version. I want to trust God for somebody here. I want to trust God for somebody in this place. That this scripture should happen to you before the end of this year. No, no, no. On a serious note, this scripture should happen to you before the end of this year. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You will not be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessing, blessing, like why pouring up the mountains and the hills. Ali, at least some of you have been to Luma Rock before. At least the, 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 the closest we can call something that looks like a hill or a mountain. If you see water pouring from that place and pouring over you, it will just be pouring over you, over your life. You are soaked in it. He said, listen, he said they'll be happening at once. Maybe they may tell you, maybe, let me tell you what it means by at once. There's somebody here in this church just a few months ago, no, last year, it was as if nothing was going on. This year, she has gotten married. This year, she never thought that this should happen. She got pregnant. This year, she has given birth. 
Do you understand what I'm saying now? So you can see everything happening at once. Fast. Do you understand? It's called restoration. It's called acceleration. And we're praying for somebody in this place that the Lord will also accelerate your journey. In the name of Jesus. So when we say speed, when we say there's a speed, when they say there's an activation of speed and acceleration, it's because the Lord is visiting. The Lord is visiting. That's what's happening. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Then the final one. When the Lord visits, he raises the dead things. So visitation or an encounter is when the Lord raises dead things. In John 11, 38 to 44, is a scripture that can help all of us. The Lord, when the Lord visits a place, there is no death thing that stays dead. No. Ezekiel, is it 47 now? Ezekiel 47. Please, let's see Ezekiel 47. We're going to read, then we'll pray. Ezekiel 47. Can we read together? One to go. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from the threshold and the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me round outside to the outer gateway that faces the east. And there was water running on the right side. What happened? And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought the, through the waters and the waters came to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and the water came to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through and the water came to my waist. And again, he measured 1,000 and it was what? A river. Uh-huh that could not cross, for the water was what? Too deep. What now happened? Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. Now follow me now. He said to me, son of man, have you seen this? He said, then he brought me and turned me to the bank of the river. What now happened? When I returned, there along the bank of the river, where what? Very many trees on one side and the other. What now happened? Then he said to me, this water, flows toward the east region and goes down into the valley and enters into the sea. When it reaches the what? The sea. What happened? The waters are healed. Man, river, sea, water. Please understand. When he enters into the sea, the waters are healed. Now what happens again? Let's go forward. And it shall be that what? That moves. Wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because the waters do what? Go there. Uh -huh. For they will be healed. Everything will live wherever the river goes. Lift up your hand and let's give a praise. Wherever the river goes, everything must live. Wherever the river goes. When the Lord visits you, everything around you must live. When we cry and say, Lord, visit us, we're asking that any dead thing lives. Any brain that is dead is receiving life right now. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. watching. We'll see you soon.